After making over 300 pints in my Ninja Creamy, I wanted to share 8 things I wish I knew before I ordered it. And then at the end of the video, I will tell you why you should or should not buy the Creamy. Which leads us to our first point, the additional costs. You get your Creamy at your door, unpack it, and whip out a pint to get one in the freezer when you realize you don't have anything to make ice cream. You have some milk in the fridge, but you have no vanilla extract, sweetener, or xanthan gum to even make a basic vanilla ice cream. There is good news and bad news. The bad news is it will cost you around $60 to get these items in bulk. The good news is once you have them, you will be able to make ice cream for months before needing to buy more. This also doesn't include things like cocoa powder, protein powder, or the other various mix-ins you may want to use. Realistically, you are looking at another $60 to $150 investment on top of the price of the Ninja Creamy itself, and that is just for dry ingredients. We can't forget about another additional cost, which brings us to the second thing I wish I knew, pint withdrawal. My Creamy only came with one pint and I knew right away I needed more, so when I ordered my Creamy, I also ordered two more pints. Being a rookie, when I received my pints, I only made one, waited 24 hours to eat it, and realized I wouldn't have one for the following day unless I made one right then and there. Ah, oh, what the f I started making three at the same time, which is also when I realized I needed to create different flavors so I could eat what I had a taste for that day. I bought two more pints, but that still wasn't enough. The cycle continued until I had 15 pints rolling at one time and various flavors on the ready for whenever I needed to satisfy my sweet tooth. While I wouldn't change this for the world, this also costed me another $150. You most likely don't need 15 pints like I have, but I would recommend you have 5 pints or a week's worth of ice cream. I would also look out for the creamy machines that come with 3 or 4 pints as a bonus offer. I have seen this at Sam's Club and Costco before and is just something to keep in mind before deciding where you get your creamy from. However, if you only end up getting one pint with your creamy, you are looking at another $40 on pints, and when counting in the dry ingredients, you can be looking at spending an additional $100 to $200 that you didn't expect to initially spend. This will take what you thought would be a $200 investment closer to $300 to $400. That may seem absolutely insane knowing how many pints of ice cream you could eat for $400, but before you tell Ninja to eat your Fromunda cheese, the next point is extremely important and could sway your decision. The price of each pint. Let's start by taking a look at Walmart's website and looking at other low calorie ice cream pints. A pint of both Halo Top or Nick's will run you about $4.50. These two brands are a majority of what low-calorie ice cream consumers will buy, so we will stick with the pricing of those. I think it would be fair to assume only an avid ice cream consumer would be buying a Ninja Creamy, so if they were buying pints at the store previously, I would also assume they would eat about two pints a week. This would equate to $9 a week or $468 per year. When looking at the Ninja Creamy, every pint of my Better Vanilla Base would cost about $2.16. Even with mix-ins or other dry ingredients, let's say we are looking at $2.50 a pint. At a consumption of 2 pints per week, we are looking at a total savings of $4 every week or $208 every year. Since the ingredient prices are already counted in the price of each pint, it would only take about a year for the machine to pay for itself. And I have a fair share of people I know that consume 4-5 to five pints a week, which would pay for itself in half that time. That is only part of the equation though. Let's talk about the calories and macros in each pint. Most store-bought, low-calorie pints have between 250 to 350 calories with anywhere from 10 to 20 grams of protein. Admittedly, when these brands first became available, it was absolutely game-changing for many, many years, even at $4.50 a pint. However, I have many pint flavors in my cookbook and on the channel that are between 150 to 200 calories that have anywhere between 10 to 25 grams of protein. My pints aren't just lower in calories, but they have a smoother ice cream consistency, more volume, and better flavor. This doesn't even include adding in protein powder either, which can easily make a pint 40 to 50 grams of protein. When it comes to the calories and macros, the creamy wins in both categories and tastes as good or better than any similar flavor of Nick's or Halo Top. 
Unfortunately, if you don't clean the creamy properly after you make your low calorie pint, you will run into a major problem, which is the fifth thing I wish I knew when I bought the creamy. Cleaning the creamy was an afterthought when I initially made my pints. Not that I wouldn't wash it at all, but I didn't know where gunk and grime built up. After about 30 uses, I noticed a foul odor coming from my drying rack and the cap to the creamy was the culprit. A bunch of gunk started building up inside of the cap where you wouldn't even think of cleaning until it started smelling like Fromunda cheese. Fromunda cheese, the cheese found in the gooch area that accumulates from not incorporating a proper hygiene routine like showering daily. Since then, I have done a few things to make sure my creamy is nearly pristine without any more funky smells in my kitchen. As soon as my creamy finishes its final spin and before I eat my ice cream, I wipe off the spindle or where the paddle attaches with a damp kitchen towel. I spray off the outside and inside of the paddle to make sure there is no gunk remaining on the grooves of the blade, which is where the hidden mold can easily start forming. I remove the rubber gasket that sits in the cap and wash it with soap and water. I run hot water through the top of the creamy and shake it vigorously to really make sure I get out any ice cream particles that may be remaining. I do this three to four times, put it on my drying rack, and get to creaming. Lastly, every two to three weeks, I let the cap sit fully submerged in vinegar for a couple of hours with the rubber gasket taken out to loosen any particles that may be trapped inside. I then go in with a toothpick or straw cleaner and get out any other debris I can. If you stay on top of cleaning after every use, this may not be necessary, but I do this just to be safe. I heard from many, many subscribers in my comment section that I needed to get a creamy and that the consistency is like no other. Since I already had my blender ice creams that I loved, I honestly thought it couldn't get much better. I brushed off the comments and kept eating ice cream from my blender, which was a mistake. If I had known just how close to real pint consistency this ice cream could get, I would have gotten this machine a year sooner and never thought twice about buying it. When I got my creamy and saw all of the functions, I originally thought I can only use the ice cream or light ice cream setting purely because that was their name on the machine. I thought if I used another function, it would mess up the entire pint. Boy, was I wrong. The functions just serve as a means of telling you how fast the blade will be turning and for how long the blade will be turning when it goes up and down. For example, the ice cream setting is actually the exact same as the gelato setting as both go down for 60 seconds at 1200 RPMs and they both come back up for 35 seconds at 450 RPMs. This means every recipe will have its own ideal setting depending on the intricacies of the recipe itself and its fat, sugar, and protein content. For example, my Oreo ice cream actually got the best ice cream consistency with the sorbet setting even though in theory, the light ice cream setting should work best. I really wish I knew the hype that the creamy would cause because I would have told all my followers a lot more often to get it sooner. At least they are starting to be back in stock on a regular basis since summer is coming to a close. As of the recording of this video, both the regular and deluxe creamy are in stock on Amazon as well as Ninja branded extra pints. I will put the links below if you want to check them out and any purchase you make will help support the channel with a small commission to me with no extra cost to you. The big question is, should you even buy a creamy in the first place? In my opinion, the answer is fairly simple. If you currently eat ice cream on a regular basis and would like to be able to manipulate your ice cream to have higher protein or lower calories depending on your fitness goals, then I would say this purchase is a no-brainer. However, if you are just interested in the allure of the product because everyone is using it on the internet and will make ice cream for a month or two and then stop, then it isn't worth it. As someone who eats ice cream year round, the Creamy is a product I wish I purchased the first day it released. The 150 calorie recipes I made were a complete game changer on my cut last summer and you could check them out in this video here. All three ice creams have their own unique base and flavor profile with mix-ins for each. Until next time, deuces.